Let's stand, if you would, if you don't mind standing. And we'll read a few verses here in Mark chapter number 14. Mark chapter number 14. <clears throat> the Bible said, After two days was the feast of the Passover, and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she brake the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone, why trouble ye her? For she hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel <clears throat> shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that this that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity that you've allowed me to stand and to represent you. And I pray tonight that you would help me, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I pray you'd bring to remembrance what we've studied. And I pray that you'd feed your flock through me tonight. And I thank you for this pastor of this church. And I pray that you'd move tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can be seated tonight. And uh, we want to look at this uh, text here tonight and uh, preach out of this text. Now, uh, I believe this is found at three places in the Word of God. This story about this woman that uh, came to Jesus and uh, all the gospel writers, the three gospel writers, uh, uh, give us a little more detail. And somebody said one time, uh, why are there four gospels? The best answer that I've ever known to give to them is more, more about Jesus. Amen. Now that's, that's why we've got the Bible, the whole Word of God, is about Jesus Christ. Jesus said in burnt offerings and sacrifices thy had no pleasure. He said, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Amen. So I'm glad tonight I got a book full of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can start anywhere and try to preach Jesus out of that tonight. But you'll find here in these three places in the Word of God where it mentions this story about this woman who comes and breaks the alabaster box and pours it on his head and how that she does that. Now, some say these are not the same story that Mark's talking about and John's talking about and Mark is talking about because it says here in verse number one after two days was the feast of the Passover and it says after two days in the book of Matthew but in, in John I believe it's the same story there in the book of John chapter number 12 it says now six days before the Passover our text here explains that for you the Bible says in verse three and being in Bethany Jesus came down there early amen He's excited about doing the Father's will. And he's down there. He's about to go to Calvary about this time. And he's excited about it. He's not hiding from the cross. He's not hiding from his Father's will. But he's living his life right on time and right in the Father's will. Amen. And so there's no discrepancy in the Word of God. Thank God. And there's some things God doesn't have to reveal to us. I'm glad he's revealed these 66 books to us. And uh, when you look at the Word of God, uh, uh, what the songwriters say when you look at it and you see something wrong, there's something wrong with you. Amen. Uh, uh, but thank God this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is, uh, uh, in this text, uh, uh, in, in Matthew chapter number uh, 26, uh, uh, they said, to what purpose uh, is this waste? Uh, and here they said, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what a waste this is. It says in verse number 4, why was this waste of the ointment made. Amen. I got this thing comes up on my phone every now and then. I never do click on it because you never know where it's going to take you at. But you ever seen one of them where it's got a picture and it looks like, well, if you look at it one way, the horse is going this way. Or if you look at it the other way, the horse is going that way. And they say on there on the bottom, determine on how you see this. It's going to determine a lot about you. It'll tell us a lot about you. Determine on how you see this event here. And so we'll find 
find the Bible tells us, uh, I believe uh, uh, according to what the Word of God says, Judas was the one uh, that started this out. Uh, Judas uh, himself, the Bible says over there in John chapter number 12 or one of these, I couldn't figure out which one to preach out of, so I'm trying to jump right in the middle of it. And Judas uh, uh, said, uh, uh, what was the purpose of this waste? And another place the Bible said all the disciples uh, uh, started saying, why was this waste uh, of the ointment made? Uh, uh, we don't watch out even good people. Uh, if we get to complain and question in God uh, and question the things of God, uh, we better watch out. It'll spread. Amen. But here's, here's a thought that I want to ask you about. Uh, when you look at this, uh, I, I say, is this waste or is it worship? Amen. Is it waste or is it worship? And it'll say a lot about you tonight. It'll say a lot about you. I understand this is Sunday night crowd. I believe this is probably the crowd that does worship God. And as I said about the Word of God, I tell you what's better than worshiping God, worshiping Him more. I mean, finding how we can worship God more and more because tonight He is worthy. I tell you, the greatest accomplishment in life that any Christian will ever have is to truly worship God. That that's why man was created. Every man was created. And the reason men follow after every ungodly, unrighteous thing trying to fill the void in their life, God placed it inside a man to have a desire to worship him. A lost man will worship snakes. They'll worship a piece of stone. They'll worship, all, they'll worship other men. But listen, God created man. The main purpose, I believe, Brother Foster, was to worship him. So tonight I wonder when you see somebody worshiping God, you say what a waste that is. I, I've pastored long enough and been in church long enough that if somebody gets kind of extravagant in their worship, they'll think how weird they are and what a waste that is. I'm telling you tonight, you're not wasting your life by worshiping God in the house of God. A child of God here on Sunday night, I believe there's some people that believe even worshiping God and want to worship him more. Amen. You're not wasting your time worshiping God. It's not a waste. And one day, thank God, we're going to go to heaven. You ever had somebody somebody make fun of going to the house of God and say, what are you going to do when you get to heaven? And they say, we say we're going to worship God throughout eternity. I'm telling you, if you don't want to worship him here, don't think you're going to worship him there. Amen. I wonder tonight in this story, is it waste or is it worship? Now, you don't find the word worship here in this text, but I'm telling you, you ever heard the old saying, uh, 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 actions speak louder than words? Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about worshiping, uh, uh, but I don't see much action in it, amen. Uh, matter of fact, true worship, uh, it ain't for my eyes or your eyes. Uh, it's for the eyes of Almighty God. I tell you where we're missing it today uh, is truly worshiping biblically our Lord and Savior. I say tonight, is it waste or is it worship? Worship is more than just a morning service. Right. Amen. I don't know what the sign says out here. I preached this message first about three or four weeks ago. And uh, I, when I drove by on Sunday night, I saw that the first part of the, it wasn't nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying anything wrong with it. And if it's out there, I, I'm not saying anything wrong with it. I'm just going to say it's going to be more than that. But it says uh, Sunday school. Uh, then it said morning worship. Uh, and then on Sunday night, it said Sunday night service. Uh, and then it said uh, prayer meeting or something like that. Nothing wrong with those things. Uh, but if we don't watch out, out, we'll think worship is a service a church service oh it's time to put on the worship amen worship is a lifestyle amen uh, uh, worship is more than just a morning service. Uh, the, the old, I remember Brother uh, James Rowland. Anybody here know Brother Jim Rowland? Uh, his father, James Rowland, down there, uh, he is an old drunk that got saved by the grace of God. I remember times I, I hadn't been around. I got saved in the Southern Baptist Church. Thank God for a man of God that preached the King James Bible uh, and preached the Word of God. Uh, and the Holy Ghost got me under conviction. Uh, and I got saved about 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, sitting on a bicycle in 1990. Uh, Say, so what you 
doing out there at three o'clock in the morning? I knew if I if I died in my sleep, I was going to hell. But that old man of God stand up there and say, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <coughs> Sometime later I heard a song that said, Whosoever meaneth me. Was this yours from this morning? There's no ice left in it. I'm not drinking anyway. I'm thirsty. It's all right. Amen. Praise the Lord. But Brother James Rowland, I was saying I was saving the Southern Baptist Church and I wasn't around what we call outward worship. Amen. And I believe that's part of it. That ain't, that's not where it starts, amen. But old brother James Rowland, we'd, we'd head down there at Rossville, Georgia, and he'd already been there. No telling how long he'd been there in the house of God. He was already standing out there at the altar. And you think, who's he talking to? His tears flowing down his cheek, and he is worshiping God. Right Therefore, anybody got there, amen. And we got in there just in time get down to the prayer meeting and went down in there, and he said, did I ever tell y'all? He told us over and over again about how God saved a drunk. He told us over and over again about how the good time lived right there in the middle of the city of Chattanooga, had a little bit of yard and he'd get back there. They probably thought he was crazy, amen. But him and God out there fellowshipping together and he'd, he'd get to praising God down there in the prayer room. Meeting started down there, not in the prayer room, but it started daily with him. Amen. They brought it with them to the house of God. We come to try to start it up. So you're talking about us? I'm talking about all of us. Amen. I thank God that this church has some worship in it. But you know what? I, don't, I know it don't just start. I, I hope it don't start. I hope there's somebody not just sitting here and it, it's not you're just throwing up your hand to fit in with the crowd. Uh, you're saying amen just to fit in with the crowd. Uh, I hope it's coming out of your heart. Uh, hey, I, I'm not saying you got to feel like worshiping God. We ought to worship Him whether we feel like it or not. Hey, there's been times I've had to tell my flesh, be quiet, I'm going to say amen to the preacher. Be quiet, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, sing praises unto my God. Anybody else talk to yourself here tonight? You got born again. You got a new nature on the inside. And the greatest desire of a born again child of God is worshiping their creator. I believe that's really where we're missing it at. It's, it's a lifestyle. I like what Jesus said about her in verse number 8. He said, she hath done what she could. Amen. He said, she hath done what she could. Have you and I done what we can to worship Him? Amen. I mean, worship, the, the worship experience, the real worship experience is not just in the house of God. I'm not minimizing that. I'm telling you what make it even better here at Emmanuel Baptist Church is if you worship Him daily. Amen. Worship Him at your house. Worship Him down there at the workplace. He's worthy tonight. He's worthy of praise and honor and glory. And let me say again, the greatest height that you and I as born again children of God ought to be striving for is worshiping God I understand that's a, uh, kind of been distorted in our day somewhat but I'm glad I got a book that shows me how to worship God aren't you I'm glad I got a book that shows me about how God is to be worshipped do you know worshiping God uh, will add to the gospel message amen so how do you know? Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said in verse 9, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. There may be people come in here and they say, I don't believe a word that went on down there, but I believe they believe it. Now what Brother Roloff said, you ever heard Brother Roloff talk about that? said, I mean, they had them protracting meetings and going for weeks. He said there was a man that sat back and listened. He came to every single service and listened to the preacher for week after week. And he said, finally made his way back to him. And he said, have you enjoyed what you've heard? And he said, I don't believe a word of it. And Brother Olaf said, well, why you been coming week after week? He said, because I believe you believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? 
He said, wherever this gospel is preached, Jesus said she'd done this for my burial. And she believed what Jesus said, amen. And she came to anoint his body for the burial. And Jesus said, this gospel, this gospel that I'm about to fulfill, everywhere it's preached, everywhere it's going to be preached throughout the whole world, let them know about this woman that came down here. And they're saying, what a waste that it was. And she bowed down and worshiped me. Amen. Over here in John. Look at John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12. Am I making any sense tonight? I'm not saying you don't worship God tonight, but I believe you'd agree it seems like in our day that men don't worship God like they once did. Amen? I want to worship Him. The Bible said in John 12, verse number 1, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment, now the, that, that ointment, that odor in the Old Testament deals with worship. Isn't that right? Let me ask you tonight, what's your odor? Amen. What kind of odor you got down there at the workplace? Now, I'm preaching myself under conviction. I, I'm not preaching to you what I've arrived to tonight, but the Holy Ghost on the inside, I want my odor at my home uh, to be that of worshiping God. Amen. What's your odor tonight? You, you send off an odor of worship? That's what I want to do. Too many times I've not. Amen. Hey, too many times I've not. But I'm telling you what tonight, uh, this woman decided, uh, she chose, uh, and she said, uh, I, what, uh, no doubt it sounds like she said, what can I do? Uh, what can I do? Uh, and Jesus said she has done what she could. Right. I can tell you biblically tonight what we can do to worship God and I'm going to try to do some of that here for a little while but only God can tell you to line up with the word of God. Amen. We don't need biker church. We don't need cowboy church. Amen. We don't need hunting church. We need church. Bible church. Worship God. Amen. Amen. Say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about worshiping God. Amen. I'm trying to get it out the best I can tonight, but how, how is it tonight? Is it waste or worship? When your husband or your wife wants to worship God, do you think they're wasting their time? Now, I know that's really digging down deep in the heart, but hey, old David got to worshiping God out there and his wife looked out the window and despised him. When he come in, she let him know. He said, you think that's bad, you wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Glory. Amen. He said, I'm going to dance for my Lord. It wasn't some seductive dance. It's some Bible thing. Amen. I ain't got time to go into all of that. All of this so-called dance and praise. All this stuff going on our day, the pastor talked about. It's not Bible worship. God just said, go back to that odor. Maybe, maybe there's some odor I can't smell that he's smelling that's going on about this message tonight. Amen? How is it? How, how is it waste or worship? Well, I, it's all right. Just do mind the Lord. Amen. That's what you said. When that husband wants to do more for the Lord to worship God, and you want to buck up against it. Oh, the other way around. The man of God wants to say, this is how I believe we ought to worship God and this is how we ought to serve God. Boy, that's a bad odor. Amen? So here tonight, I'm not trying to be mean or mad. I'm just trying to preach tonight. Where's worship gone? Thank God for people that worship. 
Amen. I, and I don't know Brother Philip, and from what I've heard, he believes in worshiping God. But I, I say this, Kylie, only God really knows whether it's real. I believe it is. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but hey, real worship uh, will come out of you. Amen. Uh, but it's got to get in you to come out of you. It'll be Bible-based. Um, so here tonight, uh, the pastor, he finished off this morning, or about the second to last point about worship. Last place I preached this out in Oklahoma, uh, and it was a meeting uh, Saturday through uh, Sunday about uh, four or five uh, different services, uh, and every message out there, uh, the preacher said something about worship. And I was the last preacher, and I had this message on my heart. The preacher come up on, uh, on Saturday morning and said, uh, uh, just relax, you ain't going to get to preach. You're going to close it all out. He said, you're going to finish them all off. So maybe I'll get to finish you off tonight. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. I was sitting there burning to preach, but I got up and I said, I, th I know I'm right where God had me to be. I said, the whole meeting has been about, uh, or somebody said something in every message about worshiping God. And I said to them, I said, has this meeting been a, a waste of time or a time of worship? Has this Sunday been a waste of time for you? A time of worship? Amen. Well, there, there's a, a definition, a definition of the word worship. By the way, it's, it's not necessarily an outward thing. I, I thank God uh, for all of, uh, things about worship. But if it don't start inside, amen. The, this word worship uh, all through the Bible uh, mentioned with worship is falling down and bowing your head and listen uh, thank God for that for falling down bowing down uh, but listen uh, still God uh, there's some older saints of God in here if it's required for you to have to bow down somewhere and to worship God uh, it'd be hard for you to do that amen I'd encourage some of this younger generation uh, to get in a closet somewhere get out in a pine thicket somewhere uh, and get on your face before God uh, and bow your head uh, and sometimes lift up your hands uh, and praise unto God out there just you and God worship Him. We're needing that so bad in our churches. We got everything in our churches but the power of God. Amen. We want, and I'm not saying everything, everything's wrong about it. But I think there's a lot of things being put in our churches thinking it's going to add and it's going to help, but it seems like we're getting less and less of the power of God. It's never going to come from technology. Technology might help it. I tell you where it's going to help if everybody here that's born again by the grace of God is going to determine I'm going to worship Him everywhere I go. Every fabric of my being, every area of my life is devoted to His worship. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That definition of worship means to prostrate. Or bow self. To prostrate or bow self. They say again tonight, you could do that and do that over and over again, but if it's not in your heart. Does that make sense tonight? I, I'm not saying it's wrong, and that's what they did, but there's plenty of people who are in false worship, and they bowed down, and they, they worship false gods, and it was still called worship tonight. Most likely tonight, uh, uh, you're either worshiping God or worshiping something else. Right. Matter of fact, for the most part, if we're not worshiping God, there's probably something else we're worshiping. Right. Amen. Amen? I prayed for a nice, sweet message tonight. Amen. I tell you what, if not cause I'm preaching, but if you and me can take heed to what took place here, it'll be sweeter and sweeter. Amen. It'll get better and better. Amen. If we really get back to Bible worship. Yeah. I came to I mean the older generation, you might say, Well, this younger generation, oh Hezekiah wanted to open up his doors to Babylon. Went to Babylon. 
God sent an old bony fingered prophet named Isaiah and he said because you've done this he said some of your grandsons are going to be eunuchs down in Babylon happened a hundred years later and Nebuchadnezzar took Daniel and an I, Mishael and Azariah down there but you know what Hezekiah said in essence he said as long as it's not in my day the older generation you still worshiping him I understand you may have a feeble body and you can't prostrate yourself, but I'm telling you, keep your heart prostrate. Keep your heart veiled. Amen. That's what makes a difference. Is it waste or is it worship? How do you see this? Even, even some, of the, some of the good disciples, I mean, I'm still flesh, they're still flesh. You're still flesh, amen. But I'm telling you, when I got born again and the new man moved on the inside and God, God told me to put off the old man and put on the new man, the new man which is created in righteousness and true holiness wants to worship God. Amen. This word, this definition, prostrate or bow self, this word of worship means adoring devotion. That's what your pastor said this morning, devotion. I thought he's going to preach what the Lord has for me. But I just want to build on it, adoring. Do you, do you adore him tonight? Is there adoration in your heart? Amen. We're too preoccupied. You know why they worship God? We, we can talk about the good old days. I understand we don't have what they have because they didn't have what we have. And I know how that I'm not, I understand the flesh. There's so much stuff and so many things going around, so much technology and so much, and some of it you've got to have to even work a job. I'm not naive tonight. I'm, I'm just trying to so say, all I know to tell you is we're going to have to do something, uh, lay something aside uh, to worship God and not just Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. I thank God for those, but it's a lifestyle. Amen. 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 Some of you young men, you dedicate yourself to a life of worship. Amen. What this woman did, here, here's another definition. Y'all okay tonight? He said 6.45, and I started on my time. I knew you was kidding unless the Lord gets... So I, I thought, here, here's that technology, amen. I don't know much about it, but I was somewhere, and I thought, I wonder what uh, a modern dictionary calls worship. There's a lot of different things about what is actually pretty good, but it really said a lot about us. It was a Webster's dictionary on my phone. I don't know what it is. Here, here's what that Webster's Dictionary had to say. You better stick with 1828 for most of it, amen. But it said, extravagant reverence, devotion, or service. Extravagant reverence, devotion, or service. Does that, does that describe you? Amen. It doesn't me all the time. I want it to more and more. But it didn't stop there. Brother Doug. It says extravagant. Here's the main one it said. And it said under it, extravagant rever reverence to a deity. And here's what it said. Or a celebrity. <laughs> Amen. Where would your attention be if your favorite television program actor came in? There's a, there's a time that's called vagabonds. Didn't have nothing else better to do than get some job being an actor and dressing like who they weren't. And they're worse than they were then. Your favorite ball player was to walk in. Amen. Oh, you set up and look. Look who showed up. And we won't pray for God to show up. Amen. My, it's all right tonight. <laughs> extravagant hey, extravagant reverence and devotion and service to almighty God boy we spent so much time trying to back up President Trump and we should have amen it, it was sad that we had to vote in a man that was such immoral amen 
Sad a man like that had more sense than about everybody else up there and did good common sense things. I'll get back on y'all's good side, all right. <laughs> oh, we, we think that the Oval Office, God sits down there below it. Oh, no, well, well, does he sit right there beside it? Just, just a little above it? Now, my Bible tells me that he's far above all principality and power. He's seated on the throne tonight, amen. There ain't going to be any election, thank God. There ain't going to be any stealing of it. He's God, almighty God tonight. And he's far above all principality and power. I say be an American like, like you ought to be uh, and take the right say God I believe he's given to this nation but I'm telling you what uh, you'll be a better citizen of the United States uh, if you'll see the full view uh, of being a citizen of heaven tonight I'm no longer a stranger and a foreigner I'm a fellow citizen of the saints uh, and of the household of God tonight Amen. That's why I want to worship him. That's why driving the roads and wearing this body out and my family, I'm not complaining tonight. That's why it's worth it. He's worthy of worship tonight. It ain't a waste of time. It's, it's worship. Amen. I see definition of worship. I see direction in the Word of God for worship. Jesus there in John chapter number 4 he come to that woman I love that story I love to preach last time I was here Amen. something about that well let me find out where I can get where I don't have to take too long but Jesus starts dealing with her about that living water and she said give me this water that I neither I don't come here to draw anymore Jesus said go get your husband amen say preacher was meddling Jesus liked to meddle only thing about Jesus is Jesus knew he wasn't just meddling he knew yeah. amen she said I perceive you're a prophet when he told her you've had five husbands and she said our fathers worshipped in this mountain he said, and you say, you Jews say that Jerusalem is where men ought to worship. He said, the time's coming. We're neither at Jerusalem or here. Uh, he said, but the true worshipers are going to worship God. I'm not getting exactly right there. Jesus said, uh, uh, the true worshipers, uh, the ones that worship biblically, amen. He said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit, little s, amen. Their spirit and in truth. And that, that links God's spirit. Yeah. Amen. That's why I'm, I'm not trying to be a mean Baptist when I tell uh, the Pentecostals that sometimes come and say uh, the way I preach or the way our family tries to dress, something like that, and they say, you Pentecostal? I say, no, I'm not Pentecostal. I don't get mad with them, but I try to share some Bible truth and tell if they give me that much time, amen. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, it's sad, uh, it's sad uh, when false worship uh, is seen as worshiping God uh, and people that say they have the truth. Amen. We got direction how to worship God, don't we? Jesus said, God is a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You know what God's doing right now? What God wanted this service to be here, He knew before time began it'd be here tonight. He seeketh such to worship Him. You know what He'll be doing tomorrow while you're at work? He'll be seeking somebody to worship Him. Isn't that right? God's a jealous God. God's such a jealous God, He's a consuming fire. So what does that mean, preacher? He wants all of you to worship Him. I'm trying to wind up here tonight. Hey, isn't that just reasonable? Amen. Present our bodies anyway. Uh, Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many people knew that verse? Who knows the one before it? Romans 11, last verse. Before it said, I beseech you therefore, he said, now... Uh, of Him, through Him, and to Him are all things. 
Boy, we can present our body to worship God when we say, hey, by the best of my ability, I'll make everything of Him, through Him, and to Him. You'll fail because we're flesh. But I'll tell you, when you fail, you'll do like Paul, oh, wretched man that I am. And you'll want to worship Him more. God don't condone sin, but I'll tell you what, and I'm not saying we should sin, but it seems like what's drove me to, to getting down there and telling God how sorry I was, how great He is, is realizing how wicked my flesh is. Amen. Right, right. I I'm trying to get done here tonight. I know you're not expecting me to get done, but God's saying get to the, these other two points. Amen. Waste or worship. How do you see it tonight? We got some descriptions of worship. This is my last point here tonight. Some descriptions of worship. Again, this is not in the text tonight. But she took that ointment and she that that odor and that ointment and she poured it on Jesus. She broke the box and poured it on Jesus. That alabaster box is worth a lot. That ointment in there was worth a lot. You know what Emmanuel Baptist Church needs to do? Break the box and pour it on him. So we're talking about whatever box God said you need to break, that you need to do away with, that needs to be shattered so you can worship God. Do it, amen. First place in the Word of God where the word worship is found is in Genesis chapter number 22. It's also the first place in the Bible where the word love is found. God said, Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. First time it's mentioned about loving anything, whom thou lovest, and get thee in the mount, uh, get thee in the land of Moriah, and offer him there upon one of the mountains, uh, which I will tell thee of. You know what Abraham did? Uh, the Bible said he rose up early in the morning, he saddled his ass, uh, and he went out in that direction, uh, uh, not knowing whither he will. He left out of there Chaldees, uh, but he didn't really know. He knew he was going to the land of Moriah. He didn't know which mountain he was going to. They finally got there after three days. Journey, uh, dear friend. Uh, hey, well, I'll tell you what to keep you going through the hard times uh, is true worship in your heart. Yeah, good. Good. He left those young men and left the ass down there, put the wood on his son. The wood's going to have to go on his son. They's going to worship. The judgment's going to have to go on his son. They's going to worship. I'm glad my son don't have to die for my sins. I'm glad God's son already did. God's already done everything we need to do to worship him. Amen. Y'all remember what he said, don't you? He said, I and the lad are going yonder to worship, and we shall come again. When's the last time you went to worship and came again? I ain't just talking about church. Amen. It'll take sacrificing. Let me give you just a few more on that. That's some descriptions. Acts chapter number 24, Paul said, when they was ready to stone him, he said, after the way they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. Next word, believing all things that are written. Tell you what, do you believe this book? You'll worship him. Believing it, amen. That's worship. Believing this Bible. So how do I know faith of that works is dead? I'm going through these last ones quickly. Well, you know what? If you start doing this, you'll be real weird. Even most modern day churches. Let me get out here with you. The Lord wants me to finish this, all right? I'm not, I don't got a whole lot longer, but I left my notes up there. I better go back to them. <laughs> get down here. I'm scared of y'all down here. What was I saying? Y'all wasn't listening. Weird. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Preachers. Who was I saying was weird? I'm too young for this. Amen? I know. Oh, they're in Colossians. You know, you, you get to worshiping God and getting rid of some things. And they'll say, Don't judge me according to a Sabbath day or a holy day. Reading unclean things. Paul had a point there. He said, Which things have a show of wisdom and will worship? So not any any satisfying of the flesh. God tells you to quit something. That don't necessarily mean somebody else needs to. If he told you to do it, you ought to do it. And if somebody quits something that God told them to quit, who are me and you to judge them for it? Say, better than thou. It'd be good to quit some things your flesh likes. Amen? Say, why? 
worship. Amen. That there, there's plenty of things as Americans I'm sure we could do without. That, that may be that thing tonight, that thing God's been dealing with your heart about that may not even be sinful, may not even be wrong, but hey, that you're just not willing to give it up to worship God. It's probably the phone. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. That word phone had to get out of it, sorry. <clears throat> You have to be worship to be a part of sacrifice and believing. You have to be willing. You have to do it when you're hurting. Amen. The Bible tells us there's a man named Job of the land of us. It wasn't the land of Oz, it's the land of us. Amen. The Bible says that God said, Hast thou considered my servant Job? You ever thought about your suffering and your troubles? Is God allowing you to be considered? Maybe He's got confidence in you that. If you'll trust Him, you can make it through the suffering. I don't want to be considered. I'm not saying that, amen. I'm just honest. Amen. Hast thou considered my servant Job? He said, there's none like him. And, and, and God, uh, Satan said, does Job serve you for naught? He said, you got a hedge about him. Was that in the first chapter? Maybe that's there. In the first chapter, God said, don't touch his flesh. The Bible said there was a, uh, his sons and daughters were eating in their eldest brother's house. And then the next verse says that the Sabians came and uh, something about a lightning bolt or something came from heaven. Uh, seemed like they was blaming God, whoever it was. But here's what I'm trying to say. Come and said, all the camels are dead and all the cattle are dead. And Joe probably thought, well, I hate they're gone, but I can live without that. You know, the Bible said while the word was still in his mouth, Another one came. Said while the word was yet in his mouth, he's sitting there meditating on, well, I don't have any cattle left, I don't have any camels left, my finances are going to take a hit. He comes in and says, hey, and he told him about something else while it's in his mouth. And finally one come in here, it said while it was still in the other man's mouth. He said, oh, your, your sons and daughters were in your eldest son's house, they was drinking wine and they was eating, and by the way, it's grape juice, amen. Let me just throw that in there. I can prove that later if you need it. That ain't the message. And the Bible says Job fell down on his face, ripped his garments, shaved his head, and worshipped. You reckon he is hurting? You hurting tonight? Maybe God let you hurt so you could worship. Amen. Maybe God let you hurt so you could worship. I don't know tonight. I know there's hurts and there's troubles and there's heartaches. Man, you know what? You know what? Mary did. She said, I'm going to worship him even though it's costly. She said, I'm going to worship him even though it's criticized. She said, I'm going to worship him and this is the cause for it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let me give you this last one and I'm done. I believe this worship was confirming. In Luke 7, I asked some older preachers, Brother Joe Bryant, so if you think he's wrong on this, I, some of them things I asked, I asked him older men he was talking about. In Luke 7, there was this woman that came into Simon the leper's house. And the Bible said she had an alabaster box of ointment. She poured it on his head and she bowed down there. I think it said she washed his feet there. It doesn't tell it. You know what it called her there? A sinner. Simon said if this man if this man was a prophet he'd known she is a sinner and Jesus said I have somewhat to say unto thee Simon he said say on <laughs> amen he talked about being frankly forgiven but you know what I think about that I believe that was Mary I believe that was Mary Brother Bryant said possibly was I believe that was Mary this time it says she broke the box here in John 12 what I'm trying to get out of that tonight is she didn't leave her first love she thought if it worked while I was a sinner seeking his salvation, if it worked right there then, uh, I, mean, I believe that was when she got saved. She is called a sinner. Now she had a name. She is Mary. And she had a close relationship. Probably nobody had a close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and Mary and Martha and Lazarus. 
Have you left your first love? Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.